What's going on, Neon Nation? Welcome back to the Neon Arcade for some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. Night City Wire details continue to trickle out, so today we'll be going over more developer details and information from Polish interviews, interviews with big media, mega threads, and Q&As. Also, stay tuned to the end of this video, guys. We have an absolutely massive giveaway worth around $500 up for grabs. If you're a cyberpunk and or tabletop role-playing fan, this is one you're going to want to check out. First up in the news, check out this awesome Game Informer cover for July. It features V fixing what seems to be his rocket arm augmentation seen in the gig trailer in a Haywood bar. Very very cool cover here and there's even a binary easter egg on the bottom which translates to love from CDPR. We also have a new Network News 54 logo with the briefing in the back being in reference to a Night City mass shooting. V's also plugged into what seems to be some sort of charging unit or even potentially a phone. The woman on the right also has a Lizzie's tattoo so there is potential here that she's a Mox member. Now there's also a couple of new screenshots from Game Informer so soak it all in. The vibe and the aesthetic so far is bang on and I'm dying to see more. Next we have some translations from a GRY online interview and some details from IGN as they both hosted Pavo Sasko. Now some of the details within this interview that we will skip for this episode can be found in my prior Night City Wire initial coverage so after you check out this video go back and watch that one to round off your knowledge on the standout details. Getting right into it, Pavel mentions that there is a car destruction system to a certain degree and that yes you can crush and run over NPCs with these cars. There's a wanted system similar to GTA and driving over NPCs will likely issue warrants out for the police to start tracking you. Now just as a brief aside, this is a fully fledged RPG and not a sandbox experience like GTA, so the repercussions of doing sketchy things will be much more severe as we'll get to later on in this interview. Moving right along here, you can pet cats in the game. You can also walk around while in dialogue and other than a few instances, you won't be locked in on what you can look at. In V's apartment, there is a TV and there is a computer where you can watch shows and check your emails. You will be able to break into any car but you will need the proper strength perks to rip open doors as well as hacking perks to hotwire the car. Night City and the Badlands that surround it will have no loading screens and the Badlands will be a fully explorable area. One of the many inspirations of the story was Akira and Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodlines and almost every quest in the game tells some part of the world story that you live in. Even the ketchup and mustard bottles belong to the cyberpunk universe, an example given on how dedicated they are to making everything believable. When it comes to the game's length, Pavel mentions that it's almost impossible to tell and that it's really just pointless to calculate. The feedback from The Witcher 3's main story was that it was a bit too long and for cyberpunk they're focusing on making the story filled with more content but not necessarily making it longer. As someone who thought the last 5-6 to six hours of The Witcher dragged on a little bit too long, despite it featuring some super interesting divergent environments, I do think this is a good call. Relations between characters are going to be realistic and will be heavily based on choice. You can have a friendly, hateful, best friend or sexual relation with the NPCs of Night City. They will heavily react to the way that you treat them. You also seem to be connected to the police system of some kind and you can scan other NPCs to check what they've done and if there's a warrant out for them. You can subdue them and the police will take over or you can even outright kill them for a bounty. The police will not see you in every district and in some, gangs will be the policing force. The absolute final straw in the wanted system seems to be the Psycho Squad, which will kill you on sight, but you'll have to do something really heinous for that to occur. Humanity Index is still a thing and you won't be able to implant yourself with more than a certain amount of cyberware. Endgame will emulate The Witcher where you are warned that you are about to proceed and that if you decide to go ahead you will be locked out of content. Now apparently you can also decide to not install any implants except the operating system in your body which might indicate that we no longer need the Kuroshi Eye or the Subdermal Grip. Running with this setup was compared to living in New York with no cell phone. Blackest Lance was the booster given to us by the Maelstrom Ganger this year instead of S. Keith. This sounds similar to Black Lace which is present in the lore. CDPR also has a special weapon design team which spends countless hours designing and creating logic behind the weapons and weapon manufacturers. Side quests will alter main quests in meaningful ways which will change the ending. There are also way more endings than The Witcher 3. There are major differences in endings as well as minor differences with variations of the same endings being based on smaller choices. This makes it truly your own ending. Going back to cars, you own a garage in your own personal mega building. You can also be rewarded with cars for quests. Nomads augment their cars to survive in the Badlands. They have special mods and graffitis that they apply to their vehicles. You can customize everything surrounding your character. Weapons have visual and functional customization and cyberware has visual and functional customization. Now you don't customize vehicles unfortunately but there are variants of each. Your apartment is still in the mega building in the 48 minute demo. It is slightly updated and there is small customization plans for this to reflect your personality. There is also an interesting question about if the officer in the NCPD during the Street Kid backstory was based on Gaunter O'Dim to which Pavel replied with you'll have to wait and see. 
Moving into the details from the Q&A preview megathread by Frost Winter, we have a flurry of micro details from emerging previews all over the web. Let's get into some of these rapid fire points. You will be able to injure or dismember enemies and then leave them alive instead of killing them. XBDs and illegal brain dances can be found on the black market. Trauma Team and the NCPD now have the ability to tase or shock you if you don't follow their orders. There are animals, but they are few and far between. Yorinobu Arasaka is in possession of the Johnny Silverhand chip at some point in the story. For more details on him, check out the Arasaka lore on the channel. Gun shops can also offer you missions and there are roaming cyber psychos in the world that act as mini side bosses. There seems to be a dozen or more radio stations and you can hear live police reports through the radio. Vehicles have unique interiors and allegedly there are a ton of Witcher Easter eggs. Auto aim can be toggled on and off and you can shoot while driving whenever you please. Apparently one real time hour is 8 hours in the game and you can skip time with no loading scenes. The number of NPCs will be connected to that time and area. There is fall damage but there are mods to negate this damage. Nudity can be turned off or on at the start and you have the ability to have your character be fully naked. Moving into the perks section, here are the ones noted by journalists and media as being some of the top tier ones. First we have Street Brawler endowing you with a 60% chance of landing a critical hit for 10 seconds after killing a foe. Under Athletics we have Hard MF which increases armor and resistances by 20% for 10 seconds. Next up we have Annihilation which reduces recoil by 50% when dismembering foes. Reflex allows you to get an armor boost for 20 seconds after landing a critical hit. Punisher under Rifles will allow you to nullify weapon sway upon a kill for 10 seconds. Dragon Strike and Blades will issue a bleeding effect with strong attacks and deal 15% damage. Craft is a tech ability which allows you to increase the sale price of crafted items by 25%. Crazy Science increases tech weapon damage by 25%. Toxicology increases a poison's duration by 5 seconds. Merciless means that if cold blooded is active, your crit chance goes up 10% and damage is also increased 2%. Master Memory increases memory regen speed by 25%, which is effectively your hacking man. When it comes to developer answers, we also have a couple others from around the web. Level designer Max Pierce has clarified that a wall running mechanic was scrapped due to design reasons, and we also have a detail about the subways. Thanks to Night City Life for translating this article from GameStar where we learn more about this. Evidently, the subway system has been scrapped and you will not use it for fast travel. There are however tourist terminals that you will unlock via progression in the world. After you've unlocked them, you can fast travel from these points of interest. There may be subway entrances that have these terminals, but you'll warp over free of charge to the next location. Personally, I'm pretty disappointed by this. Judging by specifically the 2018 trailer, this would have been an amazing feature to get to know the world of Night City, its NPCs, and just soak in some of the vistas. Moving on, we have yet another example of CDPR doing something pro-consumer. Not only does the standard edition of Cyberpunk 2077 look like a collector's edition for other games, but they've actually added more to the package recently. Cyberpunk 2077 Your Voice is a digital comic they'll be adding to each copy of Cyberpunk 2077. The updated promotional ads for the package also have a revamped Night City map and the inclusion of a reversible cover. If you haven't already, I recommend pre-ordering on GOG to support an amazing developer. Next we have some absolutely gorgeous RTX enabled pictures of locations in Cyberpunk. Now apparently the gig trailer was not using RTX like I previously mentioned, which just means Night City looks incredible already and will look even more so if you have ray tracing enabled. Finally, congratulations, you've made it to the giveaway portion of the video, and this one is absolutely insane, so thank you to Monster Fight Club and Artal Sorian for sponsoring this giveaway, worth around $500. This prize package includes the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit, and when it's released, the Cyberpunk Red Core Rulebook, signed by the man himself, Mike Ponsman. You'll also receive 16 miniatures from Monster Fight Club, including Lawman Mike and his Cyberdog. Finally, you'll receive this 3x3 foot terrain scene from the Metropolis series to help you illustrate and bring your campaigns to life. Now, if you guys are not aware, Artal Sorian Games has laid the foundation for Cyberpunk 2077 with Cyberpunk 2013, 2020, and the upcoming full release of Cyberpunk Red. This is a tabletop role-playing game set in the Cyberpunk universe. Monster Fight Club has recently joined the party after they announced their licensing partnership with Artal Sorian. Monster Fight Club evolves the tabletop experience with innovative accessories such as terrain and miniatures to help you flesh out and breathe life into your role-playing scenarios. They also have a Kickstarter campaign specifically for their Metropolis modular city buildings and there will be a link in the description so definitely check that out. So what do you guys have to do to win? All you have to do is comment below what you would name Maximum Mike's Cybernetically Augmented Mastiff in the comments below and I'll choose the best name to receive the prize pack. This contest will end on August 2nd where we'll announce our winners on the Cyberpunk 2077 Community Podcast. Now each of the other members have separate giveaways and terms to determining a winner, 
so check out all the channels for more ways to win this incredible set. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. We will have a 25 minute gameplay analysis coming soon, hopefully Friday. And as always, for anything and everything Cyberpunk, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.